What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here, and I'm gonna give you a long-term user report regarding my Logitech G915 wireless gaming keyboard. I first purchased this uh, in early 2020, and you know, I, I'll be surprised, I'll be honest with you, I'm completely surprised at the fact that a keyboard review of mine got 2.3 million views. To this day, I'm still asked, how is it holding up? So I figured I'd give you about an 18 month report on how well this Logitech G915 is, is doing. So let's do that right after this. Corsair's new 32 inch Xenion 1440p gaming monitor has the features you need to play your best. Features like silky smooth 165 hertz refresh rate IPS display with one millisecond MPRT response time, quantum dot technology HDR 400 and built in mount for either a microphone webcam or even a DSLR. To see the complete list of features of the Corsair Xenion 32 inch gaming monitor, follow the link in the description below. All right, so the Logitech G915, um, a bit of a polarizing keyboard for quite a few reasons, and I talked about this in my initial review of it. But one thing to keep in mind regarding peripherals is the fact that there is a honeymoon period. There are times when you get it, you unbox it, you're excited, it's new, you play around with it, you spend a couple days with it, and you're just like, this is the best, or this is the worst, or whatever. But that initial reaction um, sometimes changes. You might absolutely hate a product, you turn out, it turns out maybe there were some things you didn't understand about the product, you learn how to use it, and then you love it. That was not the case with this one. I loved this from day one. So one of the biggest questions that I get, especially with my live stream, I do live stream every week on Twitch, uh, uh, twitch.tv slash jays 2 cents Mondays and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Pacific time. I'm asked constantly, what keyboard do you use? And, or if it's not what keyboard do you use, it's how do you like the keyboard that you're using? Because they know I use the G915. So as soon as I show it's the wireless G915, the most common comment I get is, ew, wireless, wireless sucks. This is not the old wireless tech that you probably are used to seeing in the past. I mean, between um, the, I, I forget what Corsair calls it, Slipstream? I think Corsair calls it Slipstream. Um, Logitech is using what they call their light speed um, wireless. It's designed to remove latency. It's designed to be extremely quick responding. And the fact that this does have a wire, it does have a wired version of this keyboard too, by the way, but it does have a wire micro USB that you can plug into your system will also create a wired connection. It'll still connect through light speed, but it gives you a wired connection, which can also remove any perceived latency. Now I'm gonna say right now at the onset and probably gonna have people argue with me, I cannot notice any latency whatsoever when it comes to the wireless aspects of this keyboard. Now I wanted wireless, and I'm using the wireless pro mouse as well to couple with this. One thing I'm disappointed about is the fact that they do not share dongles, which is stupid because the light speed stuff is supposed to share, but it doesn't. So I have a different dongle for the wireless pro mouse and a different dongle for the keyboard. But I wanted wireless specifically because of my home uh, gaming slash live stream setup. I, I want as few cables as possible on the desk. So to be honest, I also like to lean back in my chair with my feet up on the desk and put my keyboard on my lap. And if I'm just surfing the net or playing some sort of a relaxed, chill game, I like to be able to do that and having cables and wires and slack everywhere. It just doesn't make a clean, tidy, shut up computer wants me to restart. It doesn't give me a clean, tidy setup. So that was why I was actually recommended this keyboard by uh, my best friend. So he said, hey, why don't you check out the G915? And he was really nervous by recommending it to me because if I didn't like it, then he was, he was gonna feel bad because this is a very expensive keyboard. I believe if I, and not mistaken. Oh my God. <laughs> Windows is doing Windows things. Okay. He was very nervous because if I didn't like it, I believe it's 250 bucks. Might have been a little bit more than 250 bucks. I think sometimes it goes as high as like 275 and I think it might even be more today because of the shortages and stuff. We can put it up on screen with the actual prices. It was a huge risk, but I'm gonna tell you right now, after 18 months, um, there is very little that I don't like about this keyboard. Now, right off the bat, I already mentioned the latency. It's so fast, I don't notice it. And I'm talking about things with like shooters, any sort of Twitch response type game. I would not be able to tell you whether this was a wired or a wireless keyboard in a blind taste test. So first and foremost, those that are like wireless sucks, that the, the, you've probably not tried a modern wireless keyboard. Now, let me tell you what does suck about the wireless aspect of it. And that is the dongle. The range of that is Horrible, absolutely horrible. So in my setup, we'll show you a photo right here. I've got my keyboard and my mouse and my tower is right to my right. And with the dongle plugged into the back of the tower, I was getting dropout, constant dropout. And I don't know 
if because of the LED lighting I've got going on and the um, nano leafs to the right, and I've got the wireless pro mouse right there, um, and all the power cables and stuff, I have no idea if there's enough RF interference happening to, to step on that signal. So what I've actually had to do is take the dongle and actually attach it to a wireless, or not wireless, but a wired hub that's literally right under the keyboard. That fixed all of my dropout problem. The irony is it's got just as much cable mess around it as it did over there. So I'm not sure exactly what was causing the interference. It's definitely something to keep in mind if you've got a distance between your keyboard and your, and your tower, because sometimes people like to use wireless because of the distance. And so if the distance is your thing, is a problem, you might have to run a hub like I did and then have it plugged into that. So that's disappointing and I'm not entirely sure um, why that is. Something else to keep in mind, and my moderator Jetman actually pointed this out to me, the G19 does not actually charge over the charging gaming mat. Not compatible with that. Let's move on to battery life. I don't know what voodoo magic they have in this. I charge it maybe once every two months. It's insane. In fact, right now, if I bring up the app, it is currently at 81%. I don't know if you can even see it. It's right there on the frame, 81%. And I charge this, what is, what is today? Today is the last day of November. I charged this last in October. I'm not kidding you. And the reason why I remember that is because of the fact that I went to start a live stream and it was dead. Not dead, but it was, it, the lights were red warning me battery was low. If the battery drops below 20% or 25%, it warned you that it's low. Now the thing on 25% is I could still go another week or two at 25% battery life. Of course your battery life is gonna depend on your lighting modes, the light colors that are set to, how often you're gaming on it, how often it's sitting there idle. And speaking of idle, it does have a, after one minute of, not, of no use, it does turn off the backlights and go into an inactive mode. Now, I know that sounds like, a, like one minute's not a lot. I don't wanna be sitting there watching a YouTube video and then I've gotta wait for it to turn on. It's instant on. If it goes inactive and you push a key, it will start typing immediately. Now you can go into the, the G Hub, the Logitech G Hub and configure that just like the lighting and stuff, you can make it take longer if you want it to do that. I don't know if it has something to do with the light speed and the frequency that it's at or what, but the battery life on this is absolutely bonkers. Um, I have to assume if we were to open this up, we would find a pretty long battery in here um, to give it as much life as possible. Now let's talk about wear and tear. If you look carefully, it's bowed. And I'm not sure why it's bowed, but it's absolutely bowed. It's, it's, it's curved like this, very minor. In fact, you might notice it if we put it down on the table flat. So don't know how that happened. I don't exactly go beating on this keyboard because of the price of it. I've talked in the past, and I'm a kind of a passionate gamer, if you will, and I've destroyed some peripherals with that passion, but I've not done that with this. I've tried to sort of bend it back. It doesn't bend back. I don't even notice it looking from this angle. Phil noticed it looking at it from the back. Um, but in terms of the rubber feet holding up, I push this thing all over my desk, but I do have it on a gaming mat. It's always been on a gaming mat, whether it be uh, I had uh, bit with Kyle's for a while and now have my own, right? And you can find our gaming mat at jsuccess.com. And here's a picture of it right here. If you guys want your own, we still have some available. Um, because of that, there's very low, low friction on the, the rubber. It holds pretty well on gaming mat materials, which are real slick because of the mouse and stuff, but it doesn't go sliding all over the, the mat, uh, whether it be ours or anyone else's, they're very similar materials, which means that our rubber on the bottom has not worn out. So we've got rubber on the standoffs. I do like to lift up the standoffs. I like an angle. And then we've got three on the front so that it has a lot of grip, whether it be on a wooden desk like this, um, some sort of maybe a, a laminated top or something. It's got plenty of grip and so far it does not appear to be wearing out. What's starting to wear, and this is normal, are the keycaps. The keycaps are kind of a, a textured matte finish, if you will, but you can tell which keys I use on a regular basis. WASD, E, Shift, and Spacebar all are polished. Now the numbers aren't wearing off, now the numbers are transparent, right? Or they're kind of a translucent, so the, the RGB lighting can shine through. I'm not a fan of the way that those are starting to wear out. It makes me want to change the keycaps because of the fact that I don't like that polished look. I like the matte look. I have found on Amazon anyway, complete keycap replacements here, but they are not from Logitech. They're from a brand called Pin. I have no idea what that brand is. They're 35 bucks for the keycap, 35.99. So not cheap, not expensive. They're not like Cherry MX caps or anything, so they are proprietary and specific to this switch, which by the way, the switch is a clicky clacky. I like clicky clack. My stream hasn't complained about it. They're not as loud as like blues, but they're definitely 
clicky. So far, no keys have worn out. I've got, in terms of presses, I've had no double, triple press. I've had no keys not register. Um, to be honest, I don't really use the other modes and I don't use the other G keys. I'm pretty standard, like I could have done without the G key entirely. Can't do without the keypad. I use the keypad all the time, but they do have a 10 keyless version of this if you don't want that. I don't even change the different modes. It has multiple modes. If you have different games that have specific uh, color layouts that you want for that game, um, you can set that up yourself. It does have a Bluetooth mode, so you can just switch between, let's say you have a laptop over here, and then you've got your computer over here and you wanna to switch to that computer, you can hit Bluetooth if it's wired or connected to there and type. Um, with the Bluetooth though, you will notice latency versus the light speed. So that's something to keep in mind. I would not recommend using the Bluetooth, but if you had like an iPad or something you wanted to just start kind of inputting to that, you can just, boom, you hit that, you immediately are on Bluetooth and then now we're back over to light speed. It's just that fast. And of course it's got a game button here which just disables the Windows key. Um, on both sides actually. And I never enable that, which is why I bump Windows key all the time when I'm gaming. The uh, volume knob has not worn out. It still registers perfectly. I've had other keyboards where the volume knob will either start skipping or it will no longer be linear or just stops working entirely. This one still works perfectly fine. Uh, multimedia keys, I rarely ever use those. All in all, I don't regret this purchase whatsoever. In fact, I'm kind of surprised I haven't bought another set for my office here, to, be, to, to tell you the truth. But I guess I just don't care as much about my setup here at work as I do say at home when I'm actually doing leisure gaming and stuff. So for all of you that have been asking me, especially on my live stream, is the Logitech G915 or the G913 wired version worth it? For someone like me who doesn't want the wires, wants long battery life, extremely low latency, wireless, um, it's absolutely worth it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find a keycap set that's got really good reviews. This one here doesn't really have any reviews, so that sort of worries me. Um, I'm gonna probably order another one. I'll probably take this one and put it in my studio here and then buy, take the brand new one and put it at home so the, the keycaps on those are, are not as worn out and then maybe I'll just ignore these keycaps for here. But if you've been putting off the idea of wireless key, keyboard, the G915 at least doesn't disappoint when it comes to feeling like a wired keyboard. It's held up fine. Um, and the amount of dirt and dust that's made its way on here because of the dusty, dirty environment I live in. I, I'm very near the desert. We get lots of winds, lots of dust. Sometimes, I, like I said, I forget to close the window. Dirt does make it in. You can pop the keycaps off, clean it, no problem. Um, I've, I've never had an issue with any keys getting stuck or not wanting to you know, rebound. I've got nothing but positive things to say about this, with the exception of the range of the, the, the receiver and the transmitter, like I said. So there you go. If you're using the Logitech G915, what's your experience been? It may be completely contrast from mine and you may have problems with yours, but this has been my 18 month review of the Logitech G915. Thanks for watching guys. And uh, don't forget 31 days of Techmas are here. I mentioned our JS2Sense gaming mats. They are down uh, underneath this video. You'll be able to see them as well as our latest shirt, which is our uh, GPU evolution shirt, which is already starting to sell really fast. Uh, our, I love our artists, our designs are amazing. And um, if you guys get a shirt, make sure you tweet me photos of it. I'll retweet and show everyone what a cool person you are because you share space with us. Thanks for watching guys. And of course, we'll see you tomorrow.